this is this is a book that honestly changed my life this is a book like there are just there's only so many of those books in your life that you read that you really feel like changes you to the core and there's just something about it that really resonates with you and that's how i felt about this one to my channel for another episode of happy holidays where i am uploading a new video every single day up until christmas so today is the big day <laughs> um this is a video that was really hard for me to make and i made some surprising decisions on it um and i can't even say why i named some of the books that i name in this video other than that, it was just a feeling and it just felt right. So today we're going to be talking about the top five books that I read this entire year. Now, as you guys can tell, I am uploading this like not even in the middle of December yet. So there definitely still are a couple of weeks left in the year where I could read my most favorite book of the year. I don't know. If that happens, I will definitely film a video and let you guys know about that happening. Um, but I definitely wanted to get this video up in time for you guys to maybe, you know, use these recommendations to get your holiday shopping done or whatever, right? So out of the books that I've read so far this year, which have been a lot, I've read over a hundred books this year, there are, it was really hard to narrow it down to five that were my top favorites. Um, and there are a couple on here that actually I had given four stars to that when I sit back and think about it, I realize that they are part of my favorite books of the year. Um, and the reason for that, like, basically I just kept coming back to these books over and over again, and they really stuck with me. And even though I may have only given them a four, I still, even in compared to some of the books that I gave a five, I just found myself thinking about them more often, and they just really made a bigger impact on me, and I just really enjoyed my time reading them. So they made it into this list. So this list is going to be in order from the fifth to the first, and let me tell you, the two, I had a battle between the two for number one, and it was really hard to choose which one to put in that first place slot. And that is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. So this book takes place back in the 30s, which I love a historical fiction and I especially love a historical f fiction thriller. Guys, my kids are playing in the background. I know you can hear it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel like I have to give that disclaimer every single time that they're being noisy in the background. But anyways, so this book follows our main character, Noemi, and she is basically a socialite in the 30s. My kids apparently just crashed into each other. All of a sudden I hear this big crash. I hear them both screaming and crying and their dad going, how did you guys crash into each other? <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> they're fine. They're dads downstairs with them. Uh, but anyways, so <laughs> this book follows our main character, Noemi, who is basically a socialite in the 1930s. She's just kind of hanging out. She's partying. She's dating. She's having fun uh, when her father calls her in to help in a situation. So basically, her cousin has been married for a couple of months now, and she's gone off to live at a mansion called High Place with her new husband. Now, the family doesn't really know a whole lot about this new husband, um, and they've been getting some concerning letters from her, from Noemi's cousin. So her father tasks her with going up to High Place to make sure that her cousin is okay. And once she gets there, she starts to find some really strange things. Her cousin is behaving very erratically. One moment she acts as though everything is fine, and the next moment she's acting as though, like, there is not fine. <laughs> she kind of has these moments of clarity where she's like, I need help, help me. And then in the next like 10 minutes, she's acting like everything is fine. So in this, during this time, Noemi is not really able to see her cousin a whole lot. Cousin's husband's mother <laughs> has kind of taken control over the situation and she is only allowing Noemi to see her every once in a while because she's supposedly sick and she needs help. So while at High Place, she starts to really realize that something is strange about this house. She is having these really weird dreams. She's having these really creepy coincidences happening. And she's just starting to get a very eerie feeling about the place in general, as well as the people who live in it, her cousin's husband and his family. They're just very odd and she can't quite put her finger on what is going on. She does meet one man in particular who kind of helps her out. And that is her husband's 
and that is her cousin's husband's cousin. <laughs> That's a mouthful. Um, <laughs> and he kind of helps her, kind of against his better judgment, he helps her to figure out what is going on and he's kind of her ally during this um, against his family's wishes. So like I said, the ambiance in this is really what makes me love it so much. I did give this one a four out of five, um, but I just keep coming back to it. I keep thinking about this book and I just really love the way that it was written. It was just very eerie and it was very... I don't know, like I said, just the ambiance of it, it really puts you in that 1930s feel, like you're in a very secluded, almost castle, and it's haunted. Strange things are happening there, and you don't know what to do. And that is just, you're just, you that whole feeling, like just the way that it was written, it's very, very atmospheric read, and I really enjoyed it. So for that reason, I put it at number five on my best list, on my best read books of the year. Okay, so the book in the number four slot is another four star read that I had that just similarly, I could not stop thinking about. I cannot stop thinking about. I've talked about it quite a bit on here since I've read it. And that is Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. So this is a series. So far, this is my favorite book in the series, but I really, really enjoy it so, so much. The only reason that I gave this book a four out of five was because I feel like Carrie has a little bit of a difficulty staying within the time period that she's writing in. So a lot of the dialogue between the characters, a lot of the thoughts that the characters are having are all thoughts like maybe that we would be having nowadays, not in those days. <laughs> um, so that's the only kind of thing is that sometimes you feel drawn out of that time period. She's trying to obviously write this in, stock, in Jack the Ripper's timeline, which was in the 1800s. And uh, yeah, sometimes that's the only reason why you just kind of feel like you're getting pulled out of that timeline a little bit, just because of kind of the wording used, the way they speak to each other, etc. Um, but other than that, I really enjoyed <laughs> the book. Other than the dialogue, she does a good job of kind of explaining Victorian times um, and where this all takes place. So I really enjoyed it. It is basically about our two main characters that are trying to find out who Jack the Ripper is um, and stop him. So they kind of go on this adventure together. They're trying to figure this out. And I just really, really enjoyed it. I've talked about it on here several times. Um, and this is number one in a four part series where these characters just continue on to kind of solve other murders. So number three, this is not going to be a surprise, I do not think, because I've talked about this book quite a bit as well, but that is A Dark and Starless Forest by Sarah Hollowell. So this is a witchy read that I really enjoyed. I read it a few months ago back in the summertime, and the thing that I loved the most about this is it is a plus size protagonist, which I have never read before, and it took me reading this to realize that I've never read that before. So. I don't know, that just really resonated with me. I'm a plus size girl and I really enjoyed reading a, reading a book from a plus size character's perspective. Um, the other thing is that, of course, I love a good witchy read. <laughs> so it's not shocking that there's gonna be a witchy book on this list, um, but I really love the vibe of this one. So it's really about families coming together to protect each other um, and also about how families are not necessarily birthed, but made, right? So in this book, we follow our main character, Derry, and she has eight adopted siblings. I love the representation in here. There's a trans character. There's a bisexual character, I believe. Um, there's just tons of different representation. There's black characters, overweight characters, <laughs> and I just love that. Um, but they're all adopted siblings, and they all have magical powers. And they are kind of taken on um, as wards by this man who is teaching them how to grow their magical powers. And they live in this seclu secluded home that is surrounded by a woods, a forest, and they are told that the outside world hates people who can do magic. So they hate witches, and if they're ever found out to be a witch, that they will be persecuted. So they're kind of locked away, not necessarily locked away, but hidden away um, in this home until one of the sisters ends up going missing. And so that obviously causes <laughs> the other sisters to freak out and wonder where she is. And Derry ends up, our main character Derry ends up kind of taking the lead in trying to find her sister. And then another sister goes missing and, you know, things get escalated from there. So it's all about protecting each other, loving each other, and doing whatever you can to keep each other safe. Okay, so now we are going to get into the number two book. 
that was really, really, really hard to choose. Um, I had such a hard time trying to decide which book was going to be number one and which book was going to be number two because I loved them both fairly equally and it was a really hard decision. Um, but to probably no one's surprise, I am going to be talking about Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky. And this one really surprised me about how much I really loved it. I've talked about it so many times when I've talked about thriller recommendations. And so I think if you guys have watched my channel for any amount of time, you know how much I love this book. And basically this book follows an eight-year-old boy. I think he's eight. Uh, maybe he's 10 in that age range, something like that, <laughs> uh, Christopher, who we follow along. And this book really seems as though it's going to be one way and it kind of turns into something else. But it wasn't normally I don't like it when books do that. But I didn't mind it in this book because it still was just so well done. And the twist was just so interesting. And I just really enjoyed it. So we follow our character. Basically, he ends up going missing for a week. They he has been building this um, in the woods behind his house he's been building this tree house with his friends and one day he all of a sudden goes missing and his family his mother as you can tell would be freaking out um his mother has been on the run from an abusive relationship and so she has taken you know they recently moved here to this um to this home that they're at now and she's trying to kind of dodge that abusive relationship when her son goes missing so a week goes goes by and all of a sudden Christopher walks out of this forest kind of as though nothing has happened. Um, he cannot remember anything from his week. That's He just doesn't know what happened to him. He seems to be physically okay other than being maybe a little bit dehydrated and hungry and cold. But other than that, he seems to be okay. Um, and so his mother just, you know, tries to take it all in stride and send him back to school and whatever. But. We start to realize that this week away has really changed Christopher at his core. He is basically a completely different kid. Um, whereas before he was really struggling with dyslexia and he was doing really poorly in school, suddenly he is like just brilliant and he is just surpassing all of his classmates. He's getting A's on all of his schoolwork without even trying and it's just as if he just automatically knows things without even having to learn them anymore. Um, and just really strange things. He starts to develop extremely high fevers out of nowhere and really bad headaches and he's just um, really going through it and something is really wrong with him and we start to kind of understand what has happened. I don't want to reveal the twist in this um, but basically he has found an imaginary friend in this forest who is not so imaginary. Um, so yeah I definitely don't want to reveal the, <laughs> the twist in here because it is quite Quite surprising I did not expect this to go in the direction that it did um, but I really really love this if you have not picked this up yet I definitely recommend that you do it kind of promises to be scarier than it really is like the direction that it goes it doesn't really make it scary I mean it's still definitely a little bit spooky but it's not super super scary so if you're kind of on the edge about thrillers and you're not too sure if they're for you or not this one probably would be a good one it is a really thick book it is how many pages over 700 pages um, but it reads really quickly. So there's that for sure. It reads really, really fast. Um, it's just really, really good. And it feels, I don't think it's supposed to be set in the eighties, but it really gave me the feeling that it was set in the eighties. <laughs> so I don't know if it's just the way that it was written, but I wish it was set in the eighties because that's how I read it. Anyways, I read it as though it was set in the eighties, even though I don't, I think it's supposed to be set in today's times. Okay. Have you guys guessed what the number one book is? If you have not, go ahead and leave a comment down in the comment section below and tell me what you think my number one book is and we're gonna see if they're right. And if you guessed The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab, you guessed correctly. <laughs> so that is my number one book that I read this year and I absolutely loved it. I work as a librarian part-time and a couple of weeks ago, somebody had ordered this book in um, to read it. And I like I remember unpacking it being like, I'm so jealous of the person that gets to read this for the first time because I loved my experience reading it for the first time. Um, so I listened to this one on audiobook and I actually just ordered a physical copy of it because I want a copy of it to put on my shelves because I loved it that much. Um, I rarely do that, <laughs> but I love this book that much that I need a physical copy of it. So basically we follow Addie LaRue who makes a deal with the devil to stay alive as long as she wants. 
So when she is ready to die, she just simply has to say that she's ready to die and it'll be over. Um, but she, tra she exchanges her soul in order for this power to be and she gets to be alive for as long as she wants. So we are following her as she's about 300 years old. As you can imagine, making a deal with the devil is kind of a strange thing and uh, the devil's not always as honest <laughs> as he should be when making deals with people. Um, so he makes this deal with Addie, but there's kind of <sighs> almost a curse that goes along with it. So Addie gets to stay alive as long as she wants, but the flip side is that no one remembers who she is the minute that she's out of their sight. So she can meet somebody and say they go to the bathroom, they come back out and they don't know who she is. <laughs> she's just a stranger to them. So it's an extremely lonely existence that she lives and she just kind of like goes, you know, goes along on her own and anybody that she talks to, anybody that she meets, um, they don't remember her. So she can't have any relationships at all in 300 years. So imagine how lonely that would be. Um, until one day when she meets somebody who remembers her, she goes out of his sight and she comes back and he remembers her which is the first time that's happened in 300 years so obviously that's really strange <laughs> um so we just follow along this journey and she tries to figure out why he remembers her and it's honestly just a story about life and love and really just how to stay in the moment and live life to the fullest as much as you can while we're here um I can't say enough good things about this. I obviously gave it a five out of five and it just, this is, this is a book that honestly changed my life. This is a book, like there are just, there's only so many of those books in your life that you read that you really feel like changes you to the core and there's just something about it that really resonates with you. And that's how I felt about this one. So I had to put this one at number one. Anybody will enjoy reading this. I highly recommend it. If you haven't picked it up yet, please, I am begging you, please go and pick up this book. I think you'll really enjoy it as much as I did. Anyways, you guys, those are my top five books that I read in the year 2022. Let me know in the comments down below if any of them were books that you enjoyed that much as well or any of my picks, your top five picks. I would love to know in the comments down below. Thanks for hanging out with me on another Happy Holidays <laughs> video. And uh, I'll see you back here tomorrow for another one. Bye.